welcome to my channel my name's Jane so today's video is a full-on tutorial step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make my latest sewing pattern the poppy pinny fort which I'm wearing all you need to do is download the PDF pattern I'll pop the link for that in the box below download it choose your fabric then you can follow along with me in this tutorial and it's suitable for all skill levels of sewing so without further ado let's get sewing So lay out your fabric and all your pattern pieces and cut them out and make sure you have the front and the skirt pieces placed on the fold and cut them out and if you want to lengthen your skirt piece you do so at the bottom of the skirt piece make sure you clip in your notches at the center front on the fold of the skirt pieces and also the pocket notch as well clip also the shoulder notch and the center front and your darts popping a pin into the top of the dart then you can transfer the markings using an erasable pen marking the top of the darts also need to clip the notches for the button placket on the back bodice pieces both the top and the bottom of the button placket now you can either choose to cut your bias out with the pattern piece or do as I do I like to use up all my fabric scraps and cut my own binding out using the same measurements but using shorter lengths and then I like to sew them together to create one long piece of binding but whichever you're comfortable with or alternatively you can use shop bought binding too so double check that you've got all your pieces cut out two back pieces your bias one pattern piece for the front and your four pockets and your two skirt pieces next we're going to mark the darts I like to use an erasable pen and just line up my ruler against the bottom of the dart legs to create the stitch lines there so firstly we're going to make our bias if you're using your strips like I am and I'm going to put them together on right angles and I'm going to stitch across diagonal to create my bias pieces but obviously you don't need to do any of this, these steps if you are using the pattern piece and using it like I've given you or if you're using shop bought bias but because I like to use my scraps of fabric up and I don't like to waste my fabric I like to make my own binding and I just literally sew the strips together just like you can see me there and keep going until I've created enough for the length that I need and I've made one long piece for the armholes and the neck and I'll just trim accordingly for what I need next I'm just going to press those joins together and then I'm going to trim off the excess fabric there and do this all the way along So we're just going to set the binding aside for the moment and we're going to work on the pockets and the skirt and we're going to neaten or overlock the side edges of the skirt and all four edges of the pockets. So you can either use your overlocker or if you don't have an overlocker you can use a zigzag stitch. When you're overlocking make sure you do not trim any of the side of the skirts off just overlock on the edge without trimming any fabric so with your skirt facing you and you can tell it's the top of the skirt with a notch at the top center notch at the top you need to now find your side notch there where your pocket is going to line up get the top of your pocket and line up 
the top of the pocket against that notch. Do it on all sides front and back of the skirt pieces lining up the pocket pieces and we're going to stitch the pockets to the skirt approximately a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric there so do that for all four pocket pieces and then take your pieces to the ironing board and press your pockets and the seam allowances away from the skirt and we're now going to understitch along that seam there it's approximately a millimeter in and nice neat understitch do that on all four pockets now lining up your notches again we're going to sew the front to the back lining up your pockets and the sides and pin in place You can mark where you're going to turn and pivot for the pocket. It's one centimetre down from the top of the pocket and again one centimetre up from the bottom of the pocket. Then you're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew all the way around our centimetre seam allowance and pivot at the pockets and do this on both sides. So you can press the seam allowances open you just need to clip there at the bottom of the pocket without going into the seam allowance do that for the bottom and the top of the pockets on both sides and then you can open up the seam allowance and then you can press the seams open for a nice neat finish and don't forget to press as you go along through each step of this tutorial press 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 you always get a really neat finish and then we're going to move on to the hem and we're just going to overlock the edge of the hem without trimming any of the fabric off all the way along. Next we're going to fold up the hem by two centimetres. So if you just get your little measuring tool out and measure two centimetres all the way along, pressing it and pinning as you go. And then we're just going to sew the hem all the way around the edge there. Taking your pins out as you go along. And we've just got one more task to do for the skirt. Working from the centre notch there, we're going to set our stitch length to the longer stitch. And we're going to work two rows of running stitch along the top there. And once we've done that, we're just going to put our skirt to one side and we're going to work on the bodice pieces. And we're going to do stay stitching along the neck edge of the back pieces and the front piece. This is just to stop your work stretching out while you're making your garment up. So the next step is we're going to make our darts so we're just going to pin the darts matching the ends of the darts and the lines make sure your pin goes through both sides of the lines there and we're going to stitch from the outer edge to the center of the dart and then we're going to tie off our ends and then press our darts down towards the waistline once we've done that we're going to pin the back pieces to the shoulder on the front so your back bodice pieces pinned to the shoulder of the front of the bodice and then we're going to pin the side of the bodice pieces together and do that on both sides and once we've done that we're going to take it to the machine and sew the shoulder seams and the side seams and we're using one centimeter seam allowances throughout Make 
make sure that you've got your dart piece facing down as you saw the side seams. And next we're going to neaten the shoulder and the side seams. Next we're going to work on the button placket on the back and you're working between the notches there. The first two notches on the outside we're going to fold that in so it's a one centimetre, fold that in and press. And then onto the next notch, fold again at that next notch. Lining up the notch on the other side and your placket should be three centimetres in width. So just make sure that's correct and then press and just double check and just pin in place for the moment and repeat that on the other side folding in that one centimeter on the first notch then again onto that second notch double checking it's three centimeters now if you're going to use a, th a finer material you can interface and you would interface in between those two fold points there and we're just going to now take it to the machine and run two rows of top stitching along the edge there of that placket so next we're going to come on to putting the binding on and we're just going to start at the neckline there and I just like to overlap the binding there along the edge by a couple of centimetres which we'll trim off later and just pin with right sides together your binding to the neck edge and just trim off any excess, leave a few centimetres on either end and you're going to sew at one centimetre seam allowance all the way around the edge there of the binding and the neckline ensuring you've got your seam allowances facing towards the back like so and then we're going to clip the curve just clip all the way along that neckline to help the binding fold over and then we're just going to press that binding and the seam allowance away from the bodice and then we're just going to fold in, trim the end there, fold it in, fold it over and then fold it over again and use a pin or a clip to clip your binding over. So fold down and then fold down again. So your binding is on the inside of the bodice, you can't see the binding from the outside. So just work all the way along, trim off any excess, fold over and again. So it's all turned over and we're just going to sew along the edge at a few millimetres away from the edge. So just place your needle towards the edge there of the binding and stitch along moving your clips or your pins as you go. we're going to add the binding to the armholes and again with right sides facing pin your binding around the armhole leaving a little bit of excess on each end of the binding I'll explain why as we come to this pit so you've got a little bit of excess there and we're going to stitch stitch the binding together along that section there trim it off and then you should have your binding that fits correctly to your armhole and then we're just going to pin that little bit left there and we're going to now sew the binding to the armhole and repeat exactly the same on the other armhole and again using one centimeter seam allowance sew the binding to the bodice of the armhole removing your pins as you go along and once we've done that we're going to clip the armhole edge again like we did for the neckline just this helps the binding to fold neatly over the armhole so just clip all the way along make sure you don't clip into your sewing and just again press your binding with the seam allowance away from the bodice and then we're just going to repeat exactly what we did with the neckline fold it over once fold it over twice and the binding should be on the inside part of the bodice not showing on the outside and we're going to sew both armholes just like we did with the neckline a couple of millimeters away from the edge of the binding and removing your pins or your clips as you go along and repeat this for both armholes. Placing the left button placket over the right placket we're just going to stitch across within the seam allowance to hold them together. Next we're going to pull our gathering threads on skirt pieces and just gently pull those threads 
till the skirt is the same width as the bodice so just gently pull evenly pull the, the stitches there so the gathers are nice and even and once you're happy with that pop your bodice inside right sides together inside the skirt matching up the notches at the center front and the center back and this just ensure that the gathers are nice and even all the way around as you pin your bodice to the skirt once you're happy with that you're going to sew your skirt and bodice pieces together in your one centimeter seam allowance and as you sew make sure your gathers are nice and even and neat if necessary just adjust as you're going along like i am there and then once you've done that take it to your overlocker or zigzag and loosen the edge of the skirt pieces there Next we're going to put our buttons on, choose your buttons, I've decided to go for the dark wooden buttons and I'm going to put three buttons on my bodice, but you can put four or five, whichever you prefer, and I'm just using my button marker just so I can place my buttons evenly. Alternatively, you can use the markers that I have put on the pattern piece too. With an erasable pen, I just mark where the buttons are going to go and then just added my three buttonholes. And then just simply use a stitch ripper to open your buttonholes. If you pop a pin at the top, you know you cannot go further than that and you can't accidentally rip your buttonhole if you're a bit unsure. And then just mark the centre of the buttonhole to find the placement where your button's going to be. And again with an erasable pen and then sew your buttons in place. And that's it, you've completed your poppy pinafore. So that's it, that's how you make the poppy pinafore. I hope you enjoyed making your very own version today. And don't forget, once you've made one, you won't stop at one, you'll make lots more, I can guarantee. I've made about four or five so far. And you can use any lightweight to medium weight fabrics, just experiment. And don't forget to tag me as well over on Instagram and use the hashtag as well to share your creations with everyone else using the hashtag Poppy Pinny4. I absolutely love mine. And then you can style it however you want to style it, but I also love to style mine with my Audrey collar. And again, there's a full tutorial on how to make the Audrey collar. So if you fancy making that, I'll pop the link for you in the box below and the PDF pattern. So I hope you enjoyed making your Poppy Pinny 4. If you did, thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe on that bell and you'll never miss out on any of my creative content. But until the next time, thanks for joining me today. Hope you enjoy your Poppy Pinny 4 as much as I do. And I shall see you on my next sewing vlog. Bye for now.